host, I asked my viewers to provide some questions that they might have about myself or my lifestyle here on the homestead in remote Alaska. Due to the amount of questions that I received, I might actually be splitting this video up into a multiple part series. That is yet to be seen, but regardless, I'll get as many of the questions answered as I possibly can. You can stick around for all the questions. <laughs> so today I'm going to answer those questions, but in my usual fashion, I'm going to do it in my own manner. And that means I'll be having more of a conversation with you, the viewer, as opposed to listing off questions and providing the answers directly. And there are some ground rules that I'll be setting for this Q and A. And that is that there are certain things that I will not be discussing. I will not be discussing my exact location nor will I be discussing how much I paid for this cabin or what I earn as for a living. Those things are off the table. However, if you want to know what my name is, I'll be glad to tell you. My name is Ian. So now that we've got that out of the way, someone asked if it wasn't Alaska, where would I have moved? Like what was my second or third choices? And it would have really been anywhere in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, that meant Washington, Northern Idaho, or even Montana, or even Colorado. However, my basis really was two things. I had to have internet for my job, and I had to be able to live off-grid, meaning that I could have a dry cabin. And in those four states, that's harder and harder to do as the you know regulations start coming in. So ultimately, it was Alaska. Alaska was always my first choice. I came here years ago and I absolutely fell in love with the state and I knew that eventually this is where I would wind up. And what motivated me to move was, again, that desire to live off-grid and to have a dry cabin, but also the influx of people into Colorado. After Colorado legalized marijuana, the state became one of the fastest growing states in the nation. It just became overwhelming to be surrounded by that many people and constantly be sitting in traffic or fighting crowds when going to the store. And so I decided that it was time to move and Alaska is where I wound up. And luckily I wound up in, you know, a pretty decent location because again, I'm away from the city, I'm away from the crowds. There really isn't a whole lot of populace on this side of the state and I'm very fortunate for that. So for those of you who might not know, I work remotely. I work from home and I telecommute essentially to my job. And I work as a purchaser for a company back in Colorado, the same company that I worked for before leaving Colorado. And that was one of my determining factors also in where I moved is that I had to have internet and I had to have electricity. Even though my water usage is off grid, my electricity is not. I am on the electric grid but whoever owned this cabin previously paid a lot of money to have the electricity brought into the cabin. I believe that it's about $50 a foot of line that's run from pole to pole. And that's a great distance from where the electricity is to bring it to this property. I can't imagine having to pay that. And I'm very fortunate that someone else did. The electricity here I would say that it's good, but it's not great. I've had several power outages, some of them lasting for several hours, if not a full entire day. And the same thing with my internet. My internet is a DSL connection, and the main connection is many miles away. And so that means that my signal is very, very weak. I have an upload speed of about one megabyte per second and my download speeds are around 11 megabytes per second. So that's not very good. And that's why it takes several hours for my videos to upload. And over the course of the past month, there have been several interruptions to not only my internet service and my electricity, but also to my cell service. So 
everything's been spotty at best. Um, eventually, I'd like to get Starlink once it's available in Alaska. Currently, it's not, but I believe by about September of 2023 is the estimate. And once it's available, I'll definitely be looking into acquiring that for the property. As I mentioned, my water system is off grid. I currently go to a couple of local wells to obtain water. And one of the wells I pay an annual fee to use. It's relatively inexpensive to use that well, but I just fill up five gallon jugs and tote that water back to the property. I currently am going through 50 gallons a week of water and that doesn't seem like hardly anything. Back in Colorado, I know my water usage was astronomical, but I also had a formal garden in my front yard and then I had a huge vegetable garden in my backyard. And so those two things alone took a lot of water. I had my children at home and with all the showers and dishes and laundry, it was a lot. Here it's just me and I'm able to control the water usage a lot better. I don't have solar on the property. I have considered it. I will be using solar to power the electric fence going around the property, but I will not have solar for the cabin itself because in the winter time, the sun never gets above the tree line. It's about halfway up the tree line and it's just not going to be enough to provide the light that I'll need to get enough electricity to power the things that I need to in the cabin, which isn't a whole lot. I'm only truly powering just a handful of things, my freezers, my computers and a handful of lights and generally it's just one light on at a time i'm pretty good about shutting the lights off as i exit an area of the cabin so solar is pretty much off the table for me for powering the cabin but if there's any generator companies out there looking to sponsor i would be more than game for that sponsorship <music> If someone, you know, were curious about whether or not it was brave or self-reliant or a combination of the two, I would say it's a combination of the two. Bravery will only get you so far, but if you don't have a skill set and a mindset that can carry you beyond your heroic act, you could find yourself in trouble. And so I think for myself, it's a little bit of both as I stated. Yes, moving out here by myself does seem like a brave thing to do. But honestly, it's my self-reliance, my ability to fend for myself, care for myself, and take care of the things that I need to that ultimately gets me f through the day and through the months and the years to come. <clears throat> you know, being brave is one of the things that I think is still important with being out here in this location. Um, you know, there were some questions regarding scariest moment and I would say honestly when the chimney fire happened that was one of the scariest moments that was the first scary moment in the cabin um, if I hadn't caught it when I did I could have honestly lost the entire cabin luckily for me I heard the crackle in the chimney and was able to get that extinguished pretty quickly beyond that before the roof got replaced there were a couple of rafters that had broke free from the roof itself and were just free dangling and the roof started to collapse in on itself. And I had to brace those with two by fours. And again, I'm, I'm very fortunate that for both of those incidents that I was here on the property and able to resolve them quickly without further damage being done. Hi, Nichols, come here. What you doing? I haven't really had any animal encounters, nor have I had any encounters with um, strangers showing up on my property unannounced. The animals have pretty much stayed away ever since the work on the cabin began this summer. At the very beginning, there were some fresh bear tracks and moose tracks, but over the course of the past two months, you know, the animals have kind of kept their distance because there's been so much commotion on the property. And as far as 
having someone show up to the property itself, I would say that would be a pretty foolish thing to do because I am always armed. I'm always carrying a sidearm on me. Generally when I'm in the cabin, I might not have my gun on me, but I always have one positioned throughout the cabin so I can easily defend myself should I need to. Um, so if you're planning on coming out here unannounced, you might want to make peace with your maker. And speaking of encounters, there was, you know, a question about strange encounters. I wouldn't necessarily say that I've had any more strange encounters other than I did see a light in the trees that I cannot explain. Um, I'm hesitant to call it an orb, even though it was orb shaped. It was too high in the trees to be a headlight. It was not moving. It was very bright, but it was also too low in the tree line to be a star. Um, and it was up close in a very dense path of forest or trees. And so that would be the only strange encounter that I've had. And it didn't really freak me out. I'm one of those people where I don't look at things. Um, I'm, I'm skeptical, but I'm not a disbeliever either, if that makes sense. I look at everything and I try to rationalize what it is that I'm seeing or what it is that I'm experiencing. And that orb or light was definitely one of those things where I try to rationalize and I just can't. And, um, you know, I would say that <laughs> Kina is, is panting. And so you're hearing him panting over in the uh, corner there. It's very hot in the cabin today. It's about 80 degrees um, here today. It's, it's a little too warm if you ask me. But, you know, on the flip side of all of that is let's talk about triumphs and some successes that I've had here at the cabin. And one of my most triumphant moments has been actually purchasing this property and making that move to move here. That was a big step. I'd been planning this for well over a decade in some fashion, right? Um, thinking about the move, researching, buying the property, and then putting my house on the market and selling it. And all that last bit happened so quickly within just a matter of weeks. And I would say that was a huge triumphant moment for me. And if I had it, had to do it all over again, I would absolutely 100% do it all over again, without a doubt. I have been here at the cabin now since last August, end of last August. And out of that time, there were a stretch of four solid months during the winter where I did not leave the property and didn't have anybody come out to the property. Meaning that my contractor is the one who actually came out and plowed the driveway, which gave me access to leave the property. But before that, it was just me and Kenai here. And I didn't really get lonely during that time frame. I say I didn't really get lonely because I didn't even have an opportunity to. For one, I am always conversing back and forth in the comments with you. And I appreciate the fact that you guys reach out to me and provide, you know, commentary that I can then have a conversation with you. Plus, I work a full time job. And so I'm always talking to my coworkers during the week and that keeps my mind going and I don't have the opportunity really to get lonely because I'm constantly talking to somebody. Then once April rolled around, my contractors were here. I had a friend come out and visit during that time and um, my son will be here in just about eight weeks from now with my furniture. And so, you know, that too has kept me from having the opportunity to even potentially get lonely and being an introvert, I can deal with people being around for a finite period of time. If I thought somebody was gonna be around 
and I had no idea when they might be exiting, that might be a little bit more difficult for me because I do love my personal space. Don't get me wrong. I still love people. I love talking to people and having people around. But being an introvert, I do need to know when that time frame is going to come to a close so that I can go back to living my life under my terms. But honestly, it didn't bother me at all to have the contractor here. I actually enjoyed the company of him and his crew. They're a lively bunch and very well mannered and entertaining as well. And so it didn't, it didn't bother me. Speaking of my son coming out in about eight weeks, there was a question about, you know, how do I deal with being away from my children and my family? And to be honest with you, I talk to my children more now than I did when I lived back in Colorado. In Colorado, they were like, oh, mom's fine. We know where she's at. She's all set up and she's good to go. And here, they're more curious about how things are going or what obstacles I might be running into or do I need something. And so they reach out a bit more. I'm also curious about how they're doing because you know, there is that distance between us. If my family wanted to come out and visit, they know they're always welcome to do so, but the likelihood of them doing so is also small. And the reason for that is, is because it's a full day's travel to get here. If you were to board a flight from Colorado, say, it is, if you got a direct flight, it's a five hour flight plus you have all the time of getting to the airport and then you know getting your baggage and what have you and then it's another five hours drive from either Fairbanks or Anchorage to get to the side of the state and that makes for a very long day plus a plane ticket is not inexpensive and nor is fuel at this moment as I'm sure everybody is aware so the likelihood of me seeing my children is not very great at the moment but I know that I will eventually see my children again. And I raised all of my children to be very independent individuals, just as I am myself. They're able to take care of themselves and I know that they're doing just fine. And they know that I love them dearly. So it wasn't really hard to leave my family behind also because my children had basically moved away already. My mother, uh, lived in another state. My siblings live in another state. In fact, one of them um, lived out of the country until recently. And my children, two of them lived a few hundred miles from me and one of them in another state. And so, you know, the fact that I was basically in Colorado by myself meant that it didn't really matter whether I was in Colorado by myself or I was in Alaska by myself. The only dis difference is the distance and the time that it takes to get to see each other. But that wasn't part of my decision making process. I know that if need be on a moment's notice, I can always catch a flight back to Colorado or wherever to see my family. There was a question about would I consider having a relationship in the future? Maybe. I'm not, I'm not one to ever say never, but I will just say that right now that's not really on the table and that's not really something I'm looking for. I am enjoying my solitude and getting to live life on my terms. So we'll see. If I didn't have keen eye, this solitude might get to me. Um, only because keen eye provides a lot of entertainment. What you don't typically see of keen eye is his hilarity. He has quite the personality, but when that camera comes out, he is so shy that he just will not, um, he just doesn't want to be on the camera. I'm surprised he actually came up to me right now when I had the camera on a few moments ago, because that's not typical of him. Usually when he sees the camera come out, he's laying down and he's staying still. Right now, he's staying still and isn't coming anywhere near me. Yesterday, I actually was working out front and I was coming in and out. And as long as I was just coming out just myself, he was sitting by the door waiting for me to come back into the cabin. But I grabbed the camera, hoping to capture that moment. 
he saw that I grabbed the camera and then I tried three more times to come in. He was like, I am not having it. And he was cowering down like, she's got that pointy thing. I don't like that camera facing me. So I couldn't capture that moment, but he is a card. And if I don't have him, I would be very sad. But my plan is to always have dogs here on the property. And so while I don't want to lose Kenai, if he or when he does pass, um, he will be replaced with some other animals. So sad moment, but that's reality too. There was a question about how does Kenai get along with other people, especially with all the contractors here. Kenai is a great judge of character, as are most dogs. And he had no problem with any of the contractors that were here. He got along great with all of them, but he has also been known to be a great judge of character. And if he knows someone has ill intent or he just doesn't trust that individual, he will make that known and he will guard me. If anybody's talking to me and they get really animated, loud or objectional, objectional, then he will come and he'll defend me. He'll be right up against me. And if someone were to then try to approach me in that moment, he will bare his teeth. And he has done that in the past. I've seen him go after people that have tried to come over my fence when I lived in Colorado. And I don't think those people will be doing that again anytime soon without thinking twice about the fact that there might be a dog on the other side of that fence. He's a great defender of property and I really love him for that. Speaking of uh, property lines and what have you, there was a question about have I met any of my neighbors? And no, I have not met any of my neighbors. I don't have any neighbors really so to speak of. If you consider somebody who lives a couple of towns distance away a neighbor, then I suppose I would have neighbors. But my between me and my nearest neighbor, you could fit a couple small towns that would house normally about 6,000 or so people in it each between me and my nearest neighbor. I don't, I don't have neighbors. And so I've not really met anybody. I've met people in the neighboring communities or towns, but that would be about it. As I mentioned previously, there were a lot of questions. And so I'm going to pause this video here just so I can make sure that it gets uploaded because uh, my upload speeds are so slow, as I mentioned previously. And I will then be posting the next part of this Q&A here today as well. So stick around for that. And I hope that you'll watch that one as well. And be sure to check out these other videos.